Well, the, one of the other things that I wanted to talk to you a little bit about was dyadic analysis mm -hmm. or you know, measuring a group as one. Yeah. Um, to, you spend a little time talking about that because it's, uh, it's an area that I know our students need to know about. If, mm -hmm. if relationships are what set us apart, we really de do need to move beyond individual measures. So. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, and there I was in my master's thesis collecting multiple perspectives, and I used correlations, and forbid. Um, so dyadic data analysis is really that idea that the unit of analysis, the people, the, the thing that you're really interested in is the couple or the dyad. Um, and you can't use those statistical analyses that say you need independent data. I don't know that Which we ever have independent data, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, the idea being that, I always use my hands when I talk about That's this. That's okay. Stuff. I think um, your hands are actually off camera. Okay, good. We'll assume that you have hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, You'd have to hold them up like this. All right. So the idea of independent data is that I, as a researcher, took from this random sample that I know we always collect, um, this person, and then I picked this person and that person, and then there was no reason why I picked those people to be in my data set. Mm -hmm. And we can't say that about families or dyads. You know, we picked them because they were related to each other. That's the reason. Right. So what always drives me to learn a new statistical analysis is my problem. So I have a problem. I have these couples and I want to know stuff about these couples as couples, not here's the men in, in this particular set of couples and here's the women. Mm -hmm. and that's what tended to happen. Um, because I want to know what impacts, like what happens between a, when a man is this particular way, I'm talking about heterosexual couples, and a woman is this particular way, how does that impact them both? Them as a unit. Right. And so there are lots of things that you can do. You can use structural equation modeling mm -hmm. to do dyadic data analysis, which is just a matter of saying, well, here's the man in the couple, here's the woman in the couple, and... Now what are we going to do? Either does there, like if you're looking at marital satisfaction, you could see whether or not their marital satisfaction loaded on the same latent variable. Mm -hmm. So is it really a couple level mm -hmm. marital satisfaction or something different? Um, they, you can use multi-level models to look at dyadic data. That's a little more controversial. Um, what, and is, then, what is the controversy? Well, I actually wanted to take that to the triadic level. And I went and talked to somebody who's the experts on HLM. And um, when you do multi-level modeling, the idea is it's nested data. And if it's over time, you have an individual's scores over time, right? And then at the level two is whatever their individual factors are. So at level one, it's the scores over time, and level two, it's these individual factors. And I wanted to say, okay, my level one is scores from three people in the same family. Uh -huh. And my level two, which would be that, that those people are then nested inside of a particular kind of family, like it happened to be a female adolescent or a male adolescent, or this maybe mom and dad were divorced or whatever. And then... So some kind of descriptive right. variable within that right. set that, that, would, uh, that a whole group could hang around. Right, exactly. All adolescent young women who had experienced this. Right, Okay. right. And, um, and so I said what I wanted to do at level one was then identify the role. So in, in essence, who they were, who the score came from, and if that made it, so in um, multi-level modeling, what you wind up is with a bunch of slopes instead of just one slope. So it's like a multiple regression for each case. Mm -hmm. And so what I wanted to know was the, the shape of that slope for mom, dad, and adolescent. How can we predict that? Or is that predictive of something? But in multi-level modeling, the thing that you have more than one score on always has to be the dependent variable. 
So that always makes it a little tough. But anyway, that was one thing I was interested in. So I talked to this guy, big guru in uh, HLM. HLM. He said, no, you can't do that. Because there's no reason why you would expect differences. I mean, you can't hypothesize differences in these roles. And when you're talking about it longitudinally, you're talking about time. And time can't go backwards. Therefore, you know, if time zero is always time zero, you can't make it time one. But it is all our, anyway. I said, okay, fine. <laughs> so I sort of abandoned that. But then I got, there's a book out um, on dyadic data analysis by Kenny, Cashy, and Cook. And um, read that book. And they have a really, because they're not family people. They say in their book that um, there's a thing called the intra-class correlation, which is the correlation you should be using when you have dyads, that really looks at, um, it's an index of similarity between them, rather than a, if one goes up, the other goes up. It's actually similarity in scores. And they say if you, you, you get an ICC, intra-class correlation, of, I don't know, of... Um, 0.4 or more, then it's troublesome non-independence of the data. But if it's less than that, you don't need to worry about it. So and when they say troublesome non-independence, something is having an effect. Something Right. You're, you're... Troublesome meaning you'd get biased estimates wow. if you tried to um, separate the, okay. the two people in the couple or whatever. And But it's interesting because I do ICCs with our clinic data. And some are zero, meaning there is no similarity mm -hmm. between these two people, like on differentiation or something like that. But I can't call that a random selection of people. They're related to, they're married. You know? <laughs> so how can I ignore them as being a dyad? So I disagree with them on that. I think if you've got people that you collected data on who are actually members of the same couple, you have to keep them as members of the same couple. Mm -hmm. So you have to do the dyadic mm -hmm. analysis. And see, I think just that statement right there uh, is revolutionary for people who don't understand systems theory. Right. And I think one of the problems, it seems to me like one of the problems that we have is we, we all get trained in systems theory at the clinical level, and then we go and we do our research methods class and everything mm -hmm. is individual, right. independent uh, samples, and these, these um, assumptions that, are, that need to be fulfilled, you know, like mm -hmm. these are the, the assumptions of the, of the statistical pre procedure, right. normal distribution, independence, right. et cetera, et cetera. And we don't even question that. Right. So there are more voices out there now saying, wait a second, we should be questioning this because mm -hmm. we believe there is a systemic, there is a, some kind of reciprocal right. uh, influence on mm -hmm. these parties. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, do you do you bump up against like when you wanted to talk about triadic analysis? Do you, mm -hmm. It sounded like you bumped up against um, maybe a problem where mathematical or statistical procedures have not yet been developed. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, I think you could do a triadic analysis with structural equation modeling, but in that multi-level model framework or paradigm. The person I talked to could not get out of, but 0, 1, 2, and 3 means something. <laughs> Versus saying, okay, I, so let's pretend I'll make mom 0 and dad 1 and adolescent 3. Why can't I do that? But he couldn't get beyond that 0, 1, 2, and 3 means something. Is that because this individual?